Hello. In this video, we will go over the basics of Power BI. Make sure to download the data sets so you can follow along or just watch. We are going to cover how to import data, how to transform data, joining tables with relationships, slicers, and pulling in formatting. Hello, guys. I will go over the tutorial for Power BI. In this one, I'm not making anything in like particular. I'm just gonna I'm gonna like pretty much explore it with you so you can see all the options. Versus like if I knew what I was making, I would just click through kind of quick and it'd be a little too scripted, but I wanted to like really explore it with you guys so you can see like what happens if something doesn't work properly and stuff like that. Um and just go through everything with you as much as possible. So yeah, so let's get started. So first you must import data. To do that, you can do it here. Some quick ones real quick. If you have nothing to really make data with, you can try some sample data right here. Or you can click this to insert your own, like just enter data manually. So you can add as many columns as you want and rows as you want. You can change column name, check, and you can put any value you want inside as well. You can load that. Cool. But I'm going to actually click get data. And this will give you many options of sources that you can pull data from. So I'm going to pull in Excel. So you can pull in CSVs. You can uh, connect to SQL all types of different data sources, okay? So I'm gonna connect to some, I have two data sheets from, for Slapjacks. So this first one right here, exporting goods, data set one. Cool, once this is here, you click on the sheet and then you should get a preview of your data. Once you see the preview of your data, the biggest thing here is to check to make sure your data looks right and that it's coming in properly and that you get you know the expected values that you were looking for cool but let's say you want to change some things before you import the data kind of like pre-transform it pre-clean it all that kind of jazz you would do it here in the click transform data button area cool here you can do a lot of different things so first biggest thing here that is great is you can change the data type so let's say you want to change this from numbers to string Click on transform, click on this for data type. I can make this, where is it? Uh, string or what you guys would call it, text. So now it's, it's, it's considered text values no longer, number values. But if I click this right here, I can undo what I just did. So here is pretty much the steps that happen. And any steps you didn't want, you can like click this to reverse the steps. So it keeps track of everything that you've done so that, so that way you don't get too lost. Okay, you can also change the column names. I want to click this and click rename. Click rename, and I can call this King. Cool. Yeah. So I can, but that's not what it should be called. But you get the idea. So yes. So this is pretty much uh, that's it. Another thing you can do. Another thing you do. You can split a column by right clicking it, and you can also. Oh, you can duplicate. You can remove errors. You can see move the column. Let's say I want to split this though. Split column. That's what I want to do. Split by delimiter. You can split by many different things, right? You you can specify the delimiter. So I can use uh, this dash because some of these are non-binary. Can split down to dash, and I'll make two different columns for me essentially. But I'm not gonna do that right now. Cool. Now I'm gonna undo what I just did. Cool. So other stuff that I can do. I can even change specific values. I believe it's if I want to do that. Uh, replace values. See, you see how I right click that there? I can change that value from 100 to 1000. Boom, right there, just that one value right there. Or I can replace multiple values. So I can find, let's say I want to change uh, Miami, Miami, all Miami's to Vegas's, right? I can do Miami. Matter of fact, wrong column. Make sure I click this column. Replace values, Miami. Vegas. Okay, and if you check, all the Miamis became Vegases, and I will toot, toot, undo those. Cool. So we can also remove columns. So let's see, how do I remove column? I need to un unselect you first. So go to home. There it is. You can remove rows. And you can remove columns. So let's remove some columns. You pretty much choose the columns that you want to remove. Cool. So if I, I guess if AV holds control and click this, you can click remove columns. Boom, those columns are gone. Okay, the same way in rows. Uh, let's see if I just go to do do. 
sa iyo. Yes, so you can also remove top rows, bottom rows, whatever that number is. You just pick the number of rows you want to get rid of, and it does that for you, okay? So pretty much you can do a lot of data cleaning here, a lot of data cleaning here. Um, you, you know, replace things, split things, take out things, replace things directly, replace entire stuff in, a, in a, the whole data set. You can change the data type. Lots and lots of great things. Hold control is a big uh, thing that happens in, in Power BI versus other tools to multi-select. Uh, so hold control and press and clicking things will um will do that. It's a very common Power BI situation. Cool. So once you're done transforming, click this, click close. I didn't really apply anything, but I'm just gonna hit close. And my data should be here on the right under field. Oh, I actually didn't bring it inside. My bad. So let's get let's get hold on. It's gonna bring it in. Got a little distracted by all the teaching. Okay, cool, because I want that data set one. Uh, okay, I already know it's fine. I'm not going to change anything. I'm bringing that first sheet. True. Load. So when I was transforming it, you can, from the transform, you can load it. I didn't press load from the transform area. Cool, now it's in here. I want to add some more data to it as well. I'm gonna add at least two other sheets. You can add like, like I said, a lot of different sources of data. So I wanna show you how to import it from the transform to make sure you guys see that. I'm also using the newest version. Oh, sheet one's actually already in there, huh? Okay, not sure why it didn't appear, but yeah, close and apply. Cool. Right, there you go. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, there it is. Yeah, there it is. So I'll just delete this. Wait, why is that called sheet? Do I have sheet one multiple times? Hold on. Let me see something real quick. No. All right, this one's definitely the same. The sheet one, too. Because I didn't name them when I created them in Excel, but these two are definitely the same. So I'll get rid of the second one, just so we're not. Delete from model. Yes. Cool. These two are definitely different. And I'm going to add one more. Cool. So three. <laughs> Sheet one, check the data. Is it different? Product price, it's either product price, product price, product category. Nope, don't have that. Cool. So just load that in. Cool beans. Now I, sh I could also, so you see here I said sheet one is confusing me. I can just rename this right here. And see, this looks like. Account creation, accounts, I'll call this accounts. Boom, now rename that. Let's rename this one. I don't know what's inside of it. Product. Shush. It's always yelling at me. What is this stuff? Alright, cool, 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 cool. This seems to work fine. Get some water super quick, thirsty. Alright. Alright, cool. So now that we're done loading our data, transforming in our data. Now we click, and if you ever want to look at your data again and go back to transforming it, you just click this tab right here and it brings you back to that transform screen essentially, okay? And all you do to start changing things again is right click, right click and click edit query, and it brings you back to that transforming screen, okay? So don't think that once you're done with it, it's gone forever. You can come back to this again, cool? Now the thing I want to do is relationships. You got to double check your relationships to make sure that they're all 
uh, that your tables are connected properly, okay? So the best way to explain this is that Power BI automatically will notice that some columns are similar and just connect them automatically for you. But um, it's pretty much relationships. So that some examples are like one to many, many to one, and one to one. Examples of one to many is like one person can have more than one email address. A many to one example is that uh, like multiple people can like the same song. And a one to one example is that like one student usually attends just one school. So these are like examples of that kind of relationship. And um, basically, you want to create connections when like you have IDs that are similar. So let's say the, like an ID here is the same ID here. That's how these tables kind of connect to each other. It's whenever things are like the same. So let's see, I have on that customer ID, on that customer ID, and I see that I have product ID here, and I also have product ID here. So I assume that product ID automatically connects to the product ID, most likely. But also, online customer ID is the same thing as uh, uh, this one as well. So I believe one account can have I need to drag this. Yeah, so you saw I did that. So you saw how I dragged that over. So I just grabbed this and I dragged it over here. And these are connected. So now it's a one to many relationship because one account can have multiple orders. So it automatically knows. And I assume that product ID is what's connecting over to this product ID as well. So I assume that probably be smart enough to know that. So you saw like that. See how I was struggling with that? Move, 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 move this around, make sure like. It's visible, whatever, but we get the idea. So these relationships are set now. Power BI knows, and this is a smart little tool that it has. Okay, so now let's get started on making some visuals. So pretty much if I go over here to the fields area, I can start clicking attributes that I want to create with. Like I said, I'm not going to make anything in particular. I'm just going to mess around with this so you can see what doesn't work, what does work, you know, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, cause people in real life, you come into errors all the time. Nothing is ever uh, one sweep like perfection. Cool. So let's make a bar graph. So let's say I want to make a bar graph of, not even sure these are right now. Okay. There is much better storage size product sport. So let's see how many orders we get per gender. So let's, so let's just click this gender and we'll do. Mm, product ID and then to make a bar chart it automatically starts making visuals over here as you can see I can make that a little bigger for you guys right here but I'll make it smaller smaller later I can make a bar chart like this nice 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 so minimize this minimize this keep the visualizations open as you can see here you can drag this open to see it more so it's a count of product ID for each gender essentially so now, this is pretty cool. So now we have a bar graph really quick. So we can come here and mess with a lot of different things. So here you can rename this if you want. Maybe not gender, we can call it sex, you know, or whatever. Um, but I'm gonna control Z that. And then to, to, to undo anything that you that you did before in here, just click the screen, hold control, press Z, and it should undo anything that you have done. So back to gender, I can change the name for this. Here, instead of count, I can do like sum, you know, I can do averages. I can do many other different types of calculations, aggregations, essentially. Okay. So that's one thing you can do in here. You can change the name of that as well. Uh, you can add a legend. So let's say I want the legend to be, uh, let's go with the gender. So I'm going to drag this here. Boom. Now I have a legend that is color matching. You see that? Pretty cool. So yeah, so let's see what else we got here. So you can click on this right here. And this is where you make all, this is like all the magic pretty much. This little spot right here, make it a little bigger for you guys. So as you can see, I can do a lot of different things here. Y axis, I can change the font size to be bigger. 
make it smaller, right to nine. I can change the font, change the color. I can make it pink. It's hard to read, but I'm gonna leave it there just to give you an idea. Change the cover size. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Change the title of the whole. Mess with the title. So the title is average. Da, 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 da. You can use double click here to change it. Or is it right click? I forgot how you change that. Um, what do you change that? Hmm. I believe that's. Hold on. How do I change that title? We're about to find out. I'm pretty sure general ah there it is so you so you go to general so you go from so you go to general and you change the title here okay you can change the heading of it you can make it bigger stuff like that color of it all that jazz cool uh so y axis so oh this is talking about the y axis title okay that's that that makes way more sense okay cool so this will change the y axis title so i can you can turn it off you see gender is gone turn it back on cool nice 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 and then x axis same thing Oh, the minimum you can change the uh, you know the minimum to something else. Let's say you want the minimum to be is this say a uh, hundred? Cool, minimum is a hundred instead of zero now. Cool, get the idea of that. Pretty straightforward. I highly recommend playing with Power BI. Just play with it, mess with it. You will not memorize anything I'm doing right now. A lot of it is just really just messing with it because you, you'll forget where things are all the time. There's just so much that it offers. It can be overwhelming sometimes, but that's what we're going through this together. Cool. We're just going to change the legend. Uh, you can change the position of it. You can put it bottom right, stuff like that. You can move the legend around, center left. Yep. Move it anywhere. You can turn it off. If you don't want it no more, turn it on. Grid lines. This one is something I use very, 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 very often. Vertical ones, you can turn them off. You can turn it on. You can make them thicker. You can make the color like pure black so that you can see them. I think it's a dotted line right now. But I don't want a dotted line. I want a strong, solid line. Yeah. You see that? Cool. Zoom slider. Uh, I don't think I want a zoom slider per se, but I guess you can have one. This is pretty much what it does. It zooms in on specific values. But I don't want a zoom slider. Cool. Bars. You can change the bars. The colors. Let's say I like this color scheme. I can make this white, which is a very bad idea. Make it gold. I can make this. Oh, I made the same color. <laughs> All right. Cool. You get the idea. Pretty much, I can change these colors. More colors. You can mess around with this, grab a color here, boom, I can make it brighter. Yep, you can even put color codes in automatically. You can Google um, hex hex color codes, HTML hex color codes, and you'll find all the colors you need. Like if you want a red, you can type in uh, hex color code red, and you'll find the, the numbers for it. Put it here, and it should work just fine. Yep, so yep, spacing. Pretty much how thick the bars are. Yep. Cool, data labels. You can put the numbers on the bars itself. And this, you can mess with it quite a bit. Change the font. Change the color of it. You can make it gold. You know, all these crazy colors, decimals, all this jazz. Background. I like messing with this a lot, too. Um, it's just the background of, of the text itself. So, yeah. But those are the values. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And plot area background. You can put a picture if you want as well, apparently, but I've never done this before, and I really recommend it too much. Uh, no, many, most people don't use it, but you can experiment with it, like I said, to put an image in the background. Cool. Then it's general. General, you can do a lot of other stuff. Properties, you can change the size of the uh, the visual itself, like like manually, you know, instead of dragging it, position of it, all that jazz, event settings. Um, the title, like I said, the title, you can mess with the title. We already saw that. Effects. Like the background itself, you can make that bad boy pitch black. I like making it black all the time. It's, it's, it just looks cool. Visual border, all this jazz. Shadow. Shadow is kind of like if you want the, um, the graph to be 3D. Let me turn this background off. It's imagery how the shadow does. So you, see, you see that? Ooh, now it's 3D. Nice, nice, nice. Two tips is that thing where you like you hover over it. And like it tells you stuff about it. That That's two, that's what tool tips is. If you're wondering what the heck tool tips are. Um, so I'm going to go back on this. Two tips is just that. Uh, about the general two tips. You can turn it off. So if you hover, it won't do anything. Alt text. Um, yeah, pretty self-explanatory what it does. Not very often used, but you can mess around with it if you want. Cool. So that is pretty much 
most of the things you can do you pretty much can change whatever you want on this on this bar chart you can change the size the the names of the the these you can put change, um change the legend change the title color the size you can make this dotted i believe as well the bar i believe it where is that it's bars i believe you can make them dotted but see, i mean oh, oh, never mind it's a bar if you can't make them dotted but you get the idea you can pretty much change these as much as possible as you want and it's very very customizable cool so let's see you want to make a different visual instead of that one you don't like it you can make it a table boom automatically have a table now don't have to worry about nothing so it tells me the gender and the average products that are associated with that gender essentially oh so yep and then with tables kind of similar idea you can mess around with it as well uh let's mess around with it so i like to make the grid vertical on i like to make it nice and thick you can make it nice and wide like that and there's also some nice nice styles that they have like bold head that looks pretty good alternating is one that i like a lot flashy rows you know there's many different presets and things of this nature that they have presets none just makes it like kind of see-through if you were to change the background um it would make it see-through i believe if i'm correct yeah you see that so keep that in mind so if you want your thing to be see-through a little bit none does that default just does this pretty much so you can even turn off the totals so you see how there's a totals right there you can turn that off totals you can turn it off if you, if you don't want totals um column headers you can like i said you can change a bunch of different things you can make one of these uh colored so let's see if i can do that for you right now <sighs> column totals specific column no that's not that's not where it is uh cell elements no that's not where it is either specific column well, where did i change ah here it is background color boom see that's, and but this, this is because i'm in that uh, specific um the alternating uh style and uh, default style whichever style it is but yeah you can also make this one specifically a color as well i can't remember right now exactly how to do it but it's definitely possible values text color I'm gonna make this specific one a specific color. Nope, we don't want that. Oh yeah, you can make it like um, have a certain uh, condition as well. But let's click out. So select things and deselect things. You just click on it and click again. So yeah, but yeah, but you can do it like I said, a lot of things with this as well. You can change um, the color of the background on this too. You can uh, sort it alphabetically, that kind of jazz, sort it from biggest to smallest. If you just click on the header. Yeah, so there's the table. And let's see what else we got. We got pie. I don't think a pie is going to work for this format. Oh, I was wrong. See, we're just messing around with it. So I showed you the percentage. Uh, using a pie chart it's pretty crazy how amazing this tool is slices you can cut the slices this is like the biggest selling point i think is that you can make this look kind of interesting it like look, looks like pac-man now <laughs> but yeah so you can come in here and change the values itself um things of that nature and see if i want to change the legend up a little bit whatever um the text make it a certain font dim light Change how big it is, color of the font, nice and black. That title, leave it the way it is. Rotation. And you can rotate this bad boy as well. Cool. All right. And see, that's a pie. You can do a scatter plot. Scatter plot, I gotta change the metrics I use for scatter plots. Let's delete this. The scatter plot. Scatter plot. Cool. And then we we'll choose the fields that I want for it. Let's see, I need two scalar values. So let's do, if see there's any association, let's do product price and product storage size. Is there only one price? Hello? Hmm, maybe only one price. Cool. That's the product price. And we'll do, Yeah, cool. So 
they should give you a scatter plot essentially and with these you can mess with it as well mm, there's a lot of different things you can do with the scatter plot here find some grid lines I want a thick solid black I didn't know what I was trying to go for. I was trying to go for the horizontal one. I was confused why I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's kind of ugly. But yeah, cool. Well, obviously, I'll keep it back to dotted, dotted. I say dash works better. Yeah, I like dash more. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Kind of red label. Yep. To show the values that's on the points. So, yep. But like I said, a lot of it is just exploring to see what you can do. Um, pretty much anything, almost anything's possible. Whatever you're thinking is probably able to be done in here, essentially. Um, I'm not going to add a picture background. And maybe just Control Z, everything I just did. Just to show you that Control Z it is a lifesaver when it comes to undoing stuff that you did. Cool. And then Control Y, reduce, reduce things. Control Z, undo things. Cool. And I think the biggest, another really useful visualization is the value card. You can just um, put something on there and show you the value, essentially. So if you want to make a nice dashboard using something like this, it's very, very useful to use the dashboards. Okay. So we can use slicers now. Uh, slicers pretty much are used to filter your data. So let's say, okay. Let's do order ID. Click that. And let's do purchase date. Cool. Math is make this a line graph. Cool. Nice. So with this line graph, you can filter this with a slicer. So make sure you click off the screen. Click this slicer. And then you want to put what you want to filter it. But I want to filter this using purchase date. Cool. So if you look at this, at the same time, it will filter my data between these two dates. If I pull it back, as you can see, it just broke it down. So I can start, I can just, I, I just want the 2022. Let's pull that bad boy. Yep, just like that. Cool. So that's the slicers. You can change how it looks. You can do, uh, where is it? I believe it's this. Chop down. Yeah, see, so you, you can multi-select. So if I can hit control, hold control, click these, I can multi-select the specific days that I want. Right, cool. I'm gonna undo all that. And then let's say, uh, just turn this all off. Yeah, whatever. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Now let's say I, I, I wanna um, only show particular dates. See this hierarchy? Year, quarter, month, day. I just want the year in the month. So I'm gonna turn these off. So I can narrow it down even more. So it just shows me the year and month. So I go to select. The slicer is still stuck on day. So let me change the slicer's data value as well. Okay, cool. So now it should also filter by month. One second. It's still doing the day. Let me just delete this completely. And put a new one. Mm -hmm. Cool. So as you can see, now I can filter by year and the month of that year if I wanted to. So let's say I want January, February, March of that year. And then, oh, so things of that nature. So that's what that does pretty much. Cool. So that's the slicer. You also can filter data um, using fil uh, filters. People say they don't use them that often, but I use them quite a bit. So you can come here, you can filter by the month. September, October, and August. And then, uh, don't want that. By the year, put just the basic filtering. You can do advanced filtering too. But it's easier with a slicer to do advanced filtering 
um, than using this. This is good for basic filtering. If you want to do advanced filtering, I suggest using the slicer. So yeah, that's how you can filter your data. And now I want to show you guys how to do quick measures. So you can go here. Let's say you want to add a new measure. Let's say I want to do uh, something like, I'll just make up a measure, weight divided by size. So I'll right click here, click a uh, new quick measure. And what you can do is, set so calculation, uh, average per category. So under average per category, average weight, let's do average weight, what's a category here? Average weight, product sport per sport. Okay, so product sport, average weight. Go click on this. Okay, cool. So I already pre created a whole formula for me. Now, just check mark this to get rid of it. Hello. Sorry, my thing's making slow. So I'm just going to click this. And I want to make this a nice table. I want to see what it looks like. It looks like that's a table. Boom. I'm actually making a value. Wait a second. It might be only one size in that table. It could be why it's doing that. Um, but this tells me, boom, so I have that. And then I want to, um, so that's pretty much a quick measure what it does. You can like do like, um, like profit is like, you know, gross profit minus uh, cost and stuff like that. You can make that. That's how you pretty much you can make a quick measure using that. You can do other stuff too, a quick measure. I didn't show you all of them. So if you look at the calculations, you can do average, variance, max. You can do difference in filtered field, filter, filter the field. So you can fill, like you can create a whole measure that's just like uh, filter to just for months of a particular month, year to year, day, year over year, very big one, um, month over month, very big one, popular. And uh, you can even do your own subtraction, like you can make subtraction, addition, that kind of stuff. Like let's say I want to do subtraction, count ID minus. Uh, no, let me switch this out. Let's do weight and height. It'll just, it'll just, just some subtraction. So let me see what it looks like. Let's go over here. I just want to see what that looks like. We have table. Yeah, you know, so it does, a, it does um, that for you. Cool. It has a bunch of other cool stuff as well uh, with the quick measure. That's another way you can get to it. So let's say I wanted to do min per category. So base value will do. Um, let's see. This has online ID. Says so online ID. I'm looking for min. No, let's do average. Let's see what I can do here. I want to average price per ID. So let's do categories ID on price. Cool. So sum of price for ID. Okay, cool. Cool. Let's see what that looks like. So it pretty much creates a new measure for me. And let's do it per, what was it? Project size per, what, 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 what's minus? Nope, that's not what I'm looking for, average. Okay, let's put product support in there as well. Boom, so adding these two, so I put product support in there. So I can see the average, the average size per product support is the product support is the average size for that product support. So probably like, you know, a basketball or like um, mouth guards that belong to the basketball. It's not basketball, that's baseball. But you get the idea. So this is where I can make a table like this. So another thing that is pretty cool in Power BI is, oh, you can make uh, measures yourself directly. So um, say I want to make my own little measure without one that they did, uh, we can do... Product price divided by product weight. So we can do price per weight. So we can do right click 
uh, new measure is to product weight. So first thing you type in, this is called DAX. DAX is the language inside Power BI that you use to create your own measures and other calculations. So you gotta type in the table name first, which is product, the product table, uh, probably parentheses. So no, I'm sorry, quotations, product. And then it will be brackets and I want, uh, let's do price per weight. So we'll do the, Yeah, price per pound. So about price. So what does it call? Let's call. Let's do product price. Cool. And then I want to put this in a sum actually. So sum parenthesis parenthesis divided by sum. <coughs> Some idea product and then brackets and I'll do weight product weight right here. Close that. Boom. <clears throat> probably did my math wrong, but you guys get the idea. You guys probably know what I'm trying to do. Looks like we're exploring this together. I was making nothing in particular, so let's see what this bad boy looks like. Product weight. And let's do where's that new measure I made? What was it called? Oh, it's called measure. Uh, of course, I didn't name it anything. You can name it in the front. So if I want to, um, you can rename it. It's this is where you rename it right here. This is you change that to whatever you want. Cool. So, yep, let's take a little bar chart. Nah, let's make a different visualization. Okay. Nope. Uh, probably just best to do. I was just thinking about that table. What is the? Hold on. Guess the average. Cool. Get that. Yeah. And I'll actually, I'll make this another value card. But whatever. You guys get that. Yeah. So do this. Cool. So one last thing with Power BI I want to show you guys for just basics. Um, modeling, like, it's pretty much where you put like um, new measurement and relationships. You can insert a bunch of different things. Um, but the, the core that everyone uses is like the stuff I just showed you guys. And then the last biggest thing for basics of Power BI is if you click on a particular value, it will affect other values inside a dashboard that you make or report. So you see how this is changing and this is changing? It's reacting to it, as you can see. So that's a very, very big, powerful uh, ability that Power BI has. It automatically does this. If you want to turn it on, you just re-click it to turn it on. Okay, cool. So pretty much what it does, it focuses on baseball, right? Let's say I want to focus only on baseball. Boom, this is, for some reason, this is affected by baseball. And then the average sport I probably chose was the baseball one. And it's reflecting. See, 802 is the average storage size for baseball. And maybe this is all baseball. I People that have IDs that are associated with baseball is essentially is the idea. This is for soccer, Okay. So, um, and I think someone was weird. I think only one person is involved with tennis or one value is involved with tennis. Even tells you the ID itself. It just tells you that one person is involved with tennis. So it's a very, very, very powerful tool. Probably, yeah, you can also create multiple pages and buttons to those pages as well. So I believe you insert a button here. Various button. Insert a button. Navigator. Page navigator. And it lets you switch between the pages. Essentially, so when you, when you uh, publish this, you go to home, when you publish this, it will allow the user to click between pages as a navigator, essentially. So cool. That's pretty much the basics of Power BI. I'll do a more in-depth one later. And then we have plenty of projects that use Power BI to actually create something specific to solve a problem. But this is just to give you a nice exposure to how the tool works and to figure out, you know, what you can do with it and all the possibilities. That's the biggest thing of data science is figuring out what you're able to do 
so you can brainstorm you know what you can do and what you can't do but all right guys thank you for listening if any questions please hit us up on slapjacks and i'll catch you guys later